please welcome to the stage the director of AFIRE, Christian Petzold. We come directly from dinner and sometimes it's like my whole body knows that when, if there's Q&A, uh, my stomach is filled up with... M because we always have dinner during the screenings. And when I'm then later on the stage, I'm totally exhausted by food. <laughs> yeah? And all the, the audience has, has, uh, is hungry and thirsty <laughs> and they, have, they need oxygen. Yeah? And I come from oxygen, from white wine. And so you, you, was, you yeah? did turn down, the, turn down the second glass, so you know... I, I know I, I'm, I'm working yeah. because of after the second glass I can't speak German also. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is a bad thing. Yeah? And uh, I stayed here some years ago with a retrospective and um, with Dennis Lim, I remember. And uh, he asked me about my favorite movies. And uh, I said there was a movie uh, I, I like very much about a bank robbery. Yeah? And he don't believe me. He think I have because I'm from Europe and Germany, and there must be there was, uh, Ingmar Bergman or something. Eh? So, <laughs> but I love this movie with the what's the what's the thief? Hmm? Den of thieves. Yeah? <laughs> and I love it. I, I've seen it again because I thought perhaps it's a uh, it's a mistake I made. Or, <laughs> yeah? But it's a really great movie. I, I like it very you much. You put it in your Criterion top ten, and <coughs> all your New York fans know it. Because, yeah. yeah. And, oh, <laughs> oh New York fans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, raise I, your I hand if you're I a New York fan of Christian Petzold. Oh, my God. Oh, you are. See? <laughs> and then I told a story, which was not a lie, that I was, the first time I was in New York, it was also in the Lincoln Center with Barbara. It was 11 or 12 years ago, and I lived in the Trump Center. Oof. Yeah? There was a hotel there. Uh, with together with Abbas Kirostami from Iron, and we we met in the in the breakfast room, and he had uh, cereals and uh, orange juice and espresso. I I had a an, an egg, an espresso, and also the orange juice. And everybody from us has to pay ninety five dollars. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> and and I said we are from the festival, and the waitress said. Um, Breakfast is not included. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? So, so we we we, are, we we talked so fantastic about m uh, filmmaking and storytelling, and uh, from this moment on, we silence at the table. Yeah? <laughs> and, and and the next and the next day, because this Trump Tower is near the Central Park, I went to the Central Park to have a cheaper breakfast <laughs> and a, you know, with a sandwich and a coffee and an Ita the Italian. A little, uh, re not the restaurants, uh, what, what the Stand, like little stalls, store, yeah. yeah. And and I was there, and then I saw Abbas Kerustami there, yeah. <laughs> also, also with a sandwich and a and a and a, and a cappuccino, and uh, and so I feel a little bit ashamed that he thinks that I'm a cheap guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he had the same thought clearly. Yeah, and, and, and he th thought the same. I said. Yeah. I'm here to, uh, I want to see uh, the place where Jonathan Glazer had made birth with a heart attack and so, yeah? and, and he said, I'm here because I've seen Kenneth Lonergan's fantastic film, uh, Margaret, and I want to see the place where, where Matt Damon and his new bicycle, yeah? So we are both lying, we know that we are lying, and then we have a uh, cappuccino together. This was great. Oh, yeah. yeah. well, rest in peace, Abbas. It's so great that you had that interaction with him. Yeah. Um, Mind you, I have not asked a single question yet, yeah. so we'll see how this goes. But uh, thank but, you for. But, sh but I like not, not to talk about <laughs> ab about the movie, but because when when I in the small s the village I grew up, uh, we have we haven't got a cinema uh, since I was nine. The last movie I saw was Jungle Book, and then it closed, and so we haven't got a cinema. And, uh, but we have a cinema in school, mm. yes? a, 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 a film club, yeah? and we have teachers who destroy everything. Yeah? And we have seen movie uh, um, The Loneliness of the Long Distant Runner, for example. Yeah? So we have to see it. And he, the film f was finished, yeah? the lights uh, was, uh, were switched on, and then he starts talking about the movie. Oh. And everything was 
gone. So therefore, I try to tell stories about Abbas Kirostami <laughs> and the Trump Tower, not to talk so directly about the, my own movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but we'll talk about your movie <laughs> <laughs> because that's my job here. I, I kind of got to do it. Uh, but hopefully we can keep it interesting. So I wanted to start by asking you about the title Club Sandwich. Oh. Which is the name of the novel that the protagonist of A Fire is writing. And it's such a curious title, but I also know that after you made the movie, like after you called it Club Sandwich in the script, you had a realization for why you called it Club Sandwich. So maybe you can tell the audience about that. Yes. Um, it, um, sometimes when you are writing a script, you don't know what is happening. Uh, what, I, I had the whole time, I had the feeling that this asshole writer, this boring guy, is not me. Yeah? He's very far away from me. <laughs> yeah? So, And I want to laugh about him. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, But during the work, uh, during the work with the actors, and they're very intelligent, especially Paula Bear is very in intelligent. Yeah? And they know something's happening. Yeah? And they know that this writer and I, we, there is something. Yeah? In, in it, yeah? And um, so Paula, uh, asks me if I had uh, the, s the same problems with my second movie like he had with his second novel. Yeah? And I said, yeah, I had problems in this time and I talk about these problems. It was a little bit like this. I have a, suc I a, su have a, su a succeed? Yeah. A success? No, no success. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have a success with uh, my first movie after the education at the Film Academy and I received half million dollars mm. yeah, for the next one and I want to show the world that I'm a very intelligent and your first movie was pilots pilots yes. yeah, female pilots yeah. mm. and uh, so I went and, and I was on the stage the first time in my life I was in the middle of discussions I was on festivals pe people saw me like sending panels and I have a big mouth and so and I never want to leave the stage again yeah? and um, I was 30 five years old and I have to pay the society something back yeah? so and so I have written very fast a film noir based on the the movie detour by Edgar Ulmer and uh, I'm with the cabriolet is fantastic uh, blonde uh, uh, blonde women yeah uh, at near the Belgian Belgian coast yeah? And it was a little bit, I, I, everybody f uh, around me, the DOP, everybody say, fantastic movie, great, this is like Melville. And so, so I was surrounded by male subjects and not by female subjects, what, what is always a mistake. Yeah? And um, they say, what a fantastic director I am. And uh, after the rushes in the afternoon, yeah? when we, after shooting, we have seen the 35 millimeter rushes, they say, my God, great, fantastic. And so, yeah? and then, my uh, girlfriend, now it's uh, my wife, she visited me during the shooting and uh, for three, four hours she, w she was there during the shooting and after in the evening she said, you are playing a director. Mm. A really hard sentence, you're playing director, I want to go back home. Yeah? I don't uh, recognize you anymore. Yeah? Mm. And this was very hard. It was the first female reaction in this time. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, so I told this story to the actors of a Fire, yeah? and then they ask me, um, "What's the what? What's the title of your second movie?" And I said it was Cuba Libre, yeah? and uh, then they start laughing very loud. Yeah? And I said, "Why are you are laughing? It's not a joke. Cuba Libre is a fantastic title." I start to defend myself <laughs> from 1995 again, <laughs> and they said, "No, it's uh, it's like Club Sandwich, yeah, it's Club Sandwich and Cuba Libre is the same." the same picture yeah? when you see the words yeah? one is for eating and one is for drinking both shit yeah? and <laughs> so and and I know uh, so I know that they it was like a psychoanalysis treatment yeah? uh, with with one victim that was me yeah? <laughs> and um, and all the actors have a fantastic uh, they have a fantastic mood after the Thomas Schubert who's playing Leon knows I know everything about his character, yeah? and he and uh, so from this moment on, he trusts everything, yeah? mm. and this was very good for all the others, but not for me. 
And this this atmosphere that they make jokes about me and about Cuba Libre, or mm. the, uh, yeah? so, so sometimes when 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 the actors in the morning when they said they said the good morning, they Cuba Libre, Cuba Libre, yeah, and. <laughs> when I'm near, and this I don't like so much, <laughs> but I have to d d to stand it. Yeah? So I know everything about this guy. Because mm. uh, you are, you were him. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I can't defend myself anymore. <laughs> yeah? and, but it's for me to see, therefore perhaps the movie is something special for me, it's because it relieved me. Mm. Yeah, the, uh, the work with the act Actors relieved me in a humorful way, yeah? and um, so in the scene when Paula Bear asks, "What's the title of your 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 novel?" and he said, uh, 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 "Not Cuba Libre, <laughs> no, no uh, Club Sandwich, Club Sandwich." Yeah? What? It's such such a fantastic joke. We all are laughing, yes? and uh, so it was for me. It was a really relief. This mm. uh, um, also a little a step in in the. Um, like I'm working, I must say. Bec uh, trust the actors. Mm. Yeah. Um, so speaking of psychoanalysis, the last time that you had a movie show at Lincoln Center was unfortunately virtual. You had Undina here, and you did a virtual Q&A, and you talked about how you had COVID right after Undina showed at the Berlinale, and then you had erotic dreams during COVID. And I know that those dreams have a connection to a fire. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's when you have fever. Um, uh, also, Paula and I, we stayed in Paris. Our interpreter, not her, but our interpreter in, in Paris, uh, during a press conference, he, fall, he was helpless. He falls down to the ground. Yeah? Oh. And we uh, we thought he's dead <laughs> for a moment, but then uh, some chocolate and orange juice helped, and um, he came back. But uh, Paula and I we are we were infected with COVID by him. Yeah? He was also yeah? <laughs> because we want to help him, yeah? and this was a mistake. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, so we we both came back to Berlin and we both have the infection of COVID. It was in March 2020. That means there was no vac vaccine at the horizon. Mm. Yeah? And so we, uh, we have fear. I must say we have fear. But we have a present in our luggage by Film de Losange. This is the company of, of Eric Romer. And um, they, uh, they have given us the whole work of Eric Romer as a Blu-ray and DVD and so on. And so I was in bed and I have erotic dreams, not so, not so, uh, they're really, really not, not very special, I must <laughs> say. Yeah? So, yeah. Bor boring erotic dreams. Yeah? So, ding dong. <laughs> I would expect better from yeah, your yeah. subconscious, huh? Yeah. <coughs> uh, but, but we have this Eric Romer films and I, I start, when you have, when you align, uh, have to lay, lay down in bed and have fever, you have, you're thinking about things you have made in your life which are not so good. The guilty, the guilty is coming out yeah, from the fever. And so I'm thinking s s about this and I th then this erotic things and then um, I start thinking why we and have, we have seen all the Romeo movies, mm. why we in Germany we doesn't have summer movies as a genre. Why the Americans have their summer movies the last day before everybody's going to a high school, uh, I thought, saw a movie, the, uh, the Myth of American Sleepover, for example. Uh, I like these movies. Or Stand By Me, yeah? mm. yeah, the, uh, with the Stephen King, uh, um, with the uh, River of Phoenix. Yeah? And so I think about this, and then the, the, the French people, they have uh, summer movies, uh, Rumer, Jacques Rivette, or, or uh, uh, Guillaume Braque. Yeah? And the Swedish Ingmar Bergman, uh, My Summer with Monica. So the Italians have it uh, with Pasolini and, 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 and uh, Fellini and the neorealism. So why did we don't have it in Germany? And then I try to work on a theory yeah, that we have uh, made a film 1930 by Billy Wilder, Fred Zinnemann, Edgar Ulmer, and uh, Robert Ziotmak. People on Sunday, you can you can hear the. I saw it today in the 
closet room of uh, Criterion, mm. yeah? people on Sunday, and it's it's a summer movie. It's mm. 1930. It's a silent movie. It's about people from the working class on a Saturday and on a Sunday near a lake. They are dancing. They are kissing. It's a really a film with wind and body and kissing and f uh, freedom. And mm. it's a, it's an, an, an idea of of weekend and spare time. And uh, so, but then the uh, the, the fasci fascism in Germany destroys this kind of cinema and all these uh, directors had to leave uh, uh, Germany, uh, the refugees, and they came to Hollywood and they make very hard movies there. Mm -hmm. Detour is a bad, hard movie. Billy Wilder's Lost Weekend. Double Indemnity. Yes, these are really hard, uh, hard movies. So. Do you mean hard or hard? Hard, like uh, like, like boiled, hard boiled movies. Mm. Yeah, dark, uh, uh, um, in the night. Yeah, mm. shadows. Yeah, uh, uh, desire, uh, revenge. Yeah, like mm. this. Yeah, and so it's something to do with their, with their exile and with their experience uh, of the German national socialism mm. yeah and w all these uh, directors tried to come back to germany that but there was no place for them anymore and my theory theory was that with them also the summer had uh, vanished mm. in germany and it's never come back the summer movies in germany you know summer movies are important because in all summer movies there are no there is no school yeah there is no factory there are no parents. Mm. This is very, very important. Yeah? In all the German summer movies, there are parents. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? And uh, as if the Germans need the authorities. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, so, and this, uh, perhaps it has something to do with the fever, but this was my, f my, my theory in bed. And therefore, uh, from this theory, a fire starts a little bit, yeah? I must say. So, um I, you mentioned like, you know, watching these films about the working class enjoying the <laughs> summer. And one thing I've always found so interesting about your films is that even if the context is myth and romance, you pay a lot of attention to work. Work and workers are very central in your movies. And I think a fire more so than even the previous movies where there's a lot of attention paid to what it means to be an artistic worker, what it means to be a seasonal worker. Um, right. Yeah, and what it also what it means to have leisure time, like who gets to have leisure time, you know, who gets to enjoy a summer. Can you talk about that? Like what in this movie, especially, why were you so interested in in zeroing in on this theme of work? I think work is very, very important. You don't have to show the work the whole time, but you have the feeling that these people there, they have to work, they have to earn money, they have, have, a, they have a, a, a reference in life. Yeah? I, when I was in the plane on Tuesday, uh, in the business class, oh, yeah, I must say it because um, when, you go, when you go up from your chair in the business class, you can see all the monitors of the people the, uh, this place, what they're watching, what kind of movies they're watching. And 30% are watching a movie with George Clooney <laughs> and, uh, and um, yeah, Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts yeah? it's, I thought, I look at this, uh, uh, why they're looking at it. I want to see it all. I want to see what, why the, where the, uh, uh, they're watching Is this. It ticket mm. of No Return? Yeah. Or so? That's what it's called, right? Yeah, it's something with a daughter. And uh, I've seen the first yeah. 20 minutes, the daughter. Uh, uh, <laughs> And uh, and uh, the daughter goes to Bali, and there's a fantastic, handsome guy with, who's, who's a farmer for seaweed, and and George Clooney is a lawyer, and she and, and, and Julia Roberts is working in a gallery, and they're both rich. Yeah? They have no work. There is no work. You can't see any work. You don't believe anything about their that their parents, that they have, that money is very important for them. That you don't see it. It's not so, so, I don't want that uh, when an actor has to play a farmer that he has to be a farmer for half a year before. It's not, po it's not the thing I like. Mm. But you have to feel that the work is something of their identity. Mm. When, you are, when you are going to a party, if it, the party is in New York or in Paris or in Berlin, yeah, and you have a drink in the kitchen and uh, you don't know, how, how, what's your name, is Simon, okay, what are you doing? Yeah? And you say nothing, you, you can leave the party. Nobody wants to talk with you because your, 
your profession is your identity. Yeah, you can start everything, uh, your conversation, just because of your profession. Or, or, or you, you can say, "I'm writing a script" or something like that. It's a little bit like you do nothing. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> or or, yeah, or I'm writing my sec second novel. Uh, what's the name? Cuba Libre. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah? So, yeah, but but it's something. W work is very very important. Yeah? And so uh, you have to have the work in the movie. You mm -hmm. have it. Yeah. Just, just when when Paula Bear in a fire, she sells ice cream. She had made two days. My my daughter, she's a student. She's selling ice cream. Yeah. Two two days a week, and Paula was two days at her place, and they, she learned to portion, mm -hmm. uh, por portionen. Mm. Yeah. Hmm? This portion, the ice cream. And uh, so it was something she knows mm. that when you want to study and you have no rich parents like Julia Roberts and George Clooney, <laughs> yeah, and you, there's no handsome boy with seaweed from Bali, you <laughs> have you have to sell ice cream, yeah. Mm. And this is important. This is not in, in this thing important that I want to have it in the middle of the movie for the whole time, but it's it must be a reference. Yeah, mm. So this is therefore for me work is important. Mm. But the people have jobs and they can do. Some there was in Barbara, Bar uh, uh, was Nina Hoss and Ronald Seffert. They never were. Uh, they 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 don't know anything about medicine. Yeah, but mm. they play uh, doctors. And there was a, a scene. They stand in front of X-ray photos. Yeah, and they're talking. Uh, uh, I, s I think it's uh, Weber B broke in the second, uh, like this, uh -huh. and they start laughing bec because they, the actors feel ashamed yeah, sure. about this. Mm. This is not so good to feel ashamed. Yeah? So sometimes uh, you, you, you can't pretend. Yeah? This is the problem. Yeah. Um, so you, you often use the same actors across movies. So Paul Abir was in Transit, in Undina, in this movie. And then Thomas Schubert is a new entrant, but he's just fantastic. I mean, he, he fits the role so perfectly. And I'm curious that when you're casting, what are you looking for in actors? What is it, what quality really draws you to an actor? The casting, I'm not alone. The, uh, the, at the end of the movie, you can uh, read that this, the movie is uh, dedicated to Simone Bear. She's the casting agent of all my movies since 25 years, and she died in January oh, wow. uh, because of breast, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. She was a little bit esoteric. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And as uh, uh, when, when they found the, the, the cancer in her uh, left breast, she thought she can do it by her own, with the help of an Indian idiot, yeah, and uh, so I talked to her and I said, "That's not possible. Don't believe this shit." Yeah, mm. but then we, uh, it was the time when we uh, are working on Undine, and I was in a hospital in Solingen. This was a small city near uh, where we shoot in Undine. This the hospital scene, and there was a. A female doctor, and she showed us the the hospital where we can shoot. And um, she was very funny at the beginning. She, she said, "George Clooney, oh George Clooney again." Yeah, George Clooney had a bike accident in Italy, and he was by helicopter. He was sent to this hospital mm. because it was a hospi specialized for uh, uh, some broken backs. Yeah? And uh, so, the, the, but the, the the management of George Clooney said, "Don't tell it." to the news or magazines or journalism. Yeah? But Solingen, it's a very small town. They don't need social networks. They do it by themselves. Yeah? Uh -huh. After after five minutes... They're gossips. The goss they're gossips. Yeah. Uh, therefore, I've, I came from this town. I know, th uh, therefore, I have left it because it's uh, the gossip is very hard. Yeah? And, and so, you know, this, this, um, this hospital, the name of the hospital was Klinikum is uh, like a clinic, yeah? mm. Klinikum Solingen. Yeah? And when George Clooney arrives with a helicopter, the helicopter, the headline in the Solinger Tageblatt, the, the magazine at the news, was the Klinikum Solingen. Yeah? <laughs> so she, she knows everybody. Yeah? So, but <laughs> yeah. okay. at this, this woman was, I like her very much. This, and I uh, uh, tell her uh, the problems with the well, from the from the um, from the cancer of and of my friend and uh, casting agent Simone, and she said, "Call her immediately. Stop this shit with this Indian guy. Yeah? She will die. 
Yeah. So and I give. So she, I think she, she make a chemotherapy, chemotherapy, and so she had three, four more years, and the casting was always together with her. And it's nev never a casting where we're looking for stars or something. We are looking for ensembles. Yeah. It's like a little bit as if we want to create a band for music. Yeah. And when you see all together, they could be on the stage like 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 a group this was a thing yeah? and the other thing during casting is i never look at the uh, that the dvds or so i'm i'm we are hearing how they are how they are speaking because you can hear if a, uh, when if, if so someone is lying and pretending and the voice not in the face mm. yeah? so you don't ask for videos you only ask for tapes or or you only listen you listen more than you watch I listen more and I never make a casting like uh, like higher and fire uh, thing uh, with Donald Trump or so you come in or so I, I I don't like it to sit at a table and make an audition and uh, come in I I'll, I'll give you a call next one please and so mm. I I hate this yeah? I never will do this it's something I think it's something to do with the with the working class thing of my father mm. he was uh, he has no job for three and a half years and he was totally totally depressed and uh, so I, d I don't like it so I'm always watching DVDs and hearing the, the voices and then I met the the uh, the actors just to look if we can speak if we have hmm. find a find a form of conversation and if it's possible di directly contract yeah? so what what was the experience with Paula beer do you remember what? Uh, what it was for transit. Yeah, it was many many years ago. She was very. It was like this. Uh, Fran uh, Francois Ozon. She uh, uh, she had made a movie with Francois Ozon, and this time Francois Ozon is preparing this movie in Berlin. Yeah? We met. Uh, I like him very much. We met in Berlin, and he asked me for the German dialogues. Mm. If if I can have a look to these dialogues, okay. if they are good, and we are working there for two or three hours of this 10 pages yeah? mm. and he showed me uh, photos of her and said uh, 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 there is uh, we have the same casting agent also okay yeah? and um, he it said the same one who passed away yeah, okay that's Simone Beer yeah. yeah she's also here the, the last Jonathan Glazer movie from Cannes she has also done oh, yeah? wow. you know, Michael Haneke and so she's fantastic uh -huh. he was a, she was a fantastic woman and uh, so she um, and, and he showed me Paula Bear and I said I saw her when she was 14 but she's a really she's a woman now yeah? mm. and he said she's great yeah? and I he so I I can look this his the rehearsal uh, 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 tapes he had made with her and then I asked her directly and she thought she had to play in front of a camera the casting and I said no no I just want to talk two or three sentences do you read the book by Anna Segers yes I like it and some t some things I didn't like and uh, and uh, we ask and I know that she's intelligent mm. she's clear she's an, she's good good person I must mm. say really good uh, uh, no there's no mean in her that's the right word mm -hmm. mean mm -hmm. no Meanless. ah yeah there yeah. and then <coughs> so we make directly the contract yeah. and Thomas Schubert like what was it that immediately struck you about him I've seen three movies uh, uh, in in four weeks. One by uh, it's a crime story by Dominic Graf, and it's a Polizeiruf. It's the name of uh, the series in Germany. Then I saw him um, uh, from Berlin School Ulrich Köhler a movie with him, and a comedy Netflix comedy King of Stonks. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, and I thought King of Stonks. Yeah, King okay. of Stonk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's really. It's, it's right. good. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's for, for me, it's a problem to see someone uh, I want to work with in, in a whole movie. I just can look for ten minutes because it's it's another guy. I just want to see something. Uh -huh. And uh, so I saw I saw these three movies, and I didn't mention, I didn't I recognize mm. that this is the same actor. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This uh, the first movie, he's a he's a fat guy without a boring. The second one, he's he's in the King of Stonks. He's he's a broker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it, it was interesting. Someone mm. told me it's Thomas Schubert, and and uh, Simone Bier told me this could be the right guy for the movie. Yeah, he's 
because the the fir first thing I, uh, uh, first I thought about a very handsome guy, mm. like a seaweed Bali guy. Yeah, so yeah, so Paula Bear could fall fall in love. Yeah, but I'm really that's a high bar. <laughs> yeah. But you hate someone who's an asshole mm. and is handsome in the same moment. Mm. Yeah, this. If you will, I will, would leave the cinema directly. Yeah? So, and but you, but the guy who's like him, you, you, you want to em embrace him, yeah, and uh, you want to sh shook him and say, "What? Start life, yeah? Mm. What's happening? This, this you need. All heroes are a little bit sad. Sometimes they're a little bit dumb. They're mostly there, but they're mostly there sad and a little bit weak. Yeah, and so." this was the right guy. I'm afraid that we're out of time because Christian has to run all the way to IFC Center for his next Q&A. So um, we'll end it on that note, but I will shamelessly plug my interview with Christian that's on filmcommon.com where we, where we went into uh, the film in a lot more detail if you want to hear more about him. He's also going to be back tomorrow for a Q&A. But thank you so much, Christian. This was thank so you. lovely. Thank you.